cannabis for diabetics. Cannabis is derived from the plant cannabis sativa, which contains the chemical THC, which is well known for its psychoactive effects. It is known by many other names, including marijuana, weed, pot, flower, grass, and so on, and can be consumed by smoking, vaping, or eating. It is now possible to cultivate it to contain more THC, thereby you know, increasing the potency of its mind-altering effects. For the purposes of this video, we will go over what you should know as a diabetic if you choose to consume THC-containing products. Hello everyone, if you are looking for exclusive deals, blogs, educational content every week delivered to your email, subscribe to our newsletter at sugarmds.com right now. THC in marijuana is distinct from cannabidiol, a chemical found in the same plant. CBD is not psychoactive and research is currently being conducted on its potential positive effects on inflammation, pain, sleep, and other symptoms and some people actually use it for that already. Now CBD can be extracted from the cannabis plants as you know and is frequently added to foods, beverages, beauty products, and some other over-the-counter products that have been or that have not been actually officially approved by FDA at all. Do they have to be approved? Not really. but but, you know, when the FDA approves something, it typically becomes a medication. Now, what effects does marijuana have on your brain and body? Now, cannabis plant can be grown to contain more THC. Again, you know, it affects your mental and physical state. Marijuana changes the chemicals in your brain and influences how your brain receptors communicate with your body. This is one of the reasons why, even in the United States here, marijuana is legal and legal drinking age is around 21. Now, our brains are not fully developed until we are 25, so introducing a mind-altering chemical into a developing brain possess some immediate and long-term risks. Now, medical use may be permitted for those under the age of 21, but only under strict medical supervision. Now, whether for recreational or medicinal purposes, anyone who chooses to use marijuana should do so in a safe environment with safe people because THC has a wide range of effects on the brain and the body. So everybody responds differently, so don't be alone when you're trying that. The way your brain and body react to marijuana can vary greatly. Again, from one experience to the another is totally different. And it also depends on the marijuana strain that you're using, the quantity you consume, and how you consume it, like smoking, vaping, eating, drinking, etc. But uh, your state of mind at the type of consumption is also important. So if you are mixing with alcohol, that's not a good combination. Now, again, uh, other medications in your system, alcohol can be considered a medication, can really affect uh, your overall response. Again, even the insulin in your system, for example, if you are taking basal insulin or if you took a bolus insulin recently, can also affect your response. Marijuana's effect can also vary greatly from day to day sometimes. Do not expect your body to react in the same way that somebody else's body did, right? The effect of marijuana on you will be uh, greatly different because of your own chemical makeup. You might feel something in the hours following marijuana consumption. You may feel relaxed, mellow, and serene. Some people feel euphoric, joyful, and inventive. Some people become sleepy, sluggish, uh, as if your body is too heavy. Some people get shakes or get tense, similar to sensation of low blood sugar. Some people become super talkative with a mind that basically wanders. Some people become really quiet with no mental chatter. Some people get anxious, paranoid, unable to calm themselves. Thirst, hunger, unable to suppress the appetite can be a problem. And some people are, get really dizzy and nauseated. Now, furthermore, marijuana remains in your body for three to 40 days, depending on the type and frequency of use. This means you could test positive for drugs for up to a month after using them. It also means that the chemical changes in the brain caused by marijuana 
can last anywhere from three days to a month after consumption. Now, some people report feeling generally relaxed and calmer in the days and weeks following the use, while the others report feeling super anxious and brain fog. So, be careful before you get into trying this little naughty plant. Now, CBD and THC are being studied to see how they affect and possibly work with the human endocannabinoid system, which is a system in the body that aids in the regulation and balance of key bodily functions such as energy balance, the appetite, pain, mood, and memory. Again, marijuana consumption in different ways affect your system differently depending on the method of consumption and the amount consumed. Now, marijuana, for example, could be inhaled. Now, effects of marijuana on the brain and body are more immediate when smoked or vaporized, basically kicking in pretty quickly and peaking within a few minutes to an hour. Now, inhaled marijuana has a more immediate effect on your blood sugar levels as well. Now, some users report that their blood sugar levels begin to drop almost immediately after consumption. The effect can last for several hours with brain fog remaining in the system for up to three days. The intensity will vary depending on the method of delivery, the amount consumed, and the strength of the marijuana strain. Understand that smoking anything can actually be harmful to your lungs due to the numerous chemicals you inhale during that process. Marijuana can be eaten by cooking it with a fat source like a butter or oil so that the THC is absorbed into the fat source and then adding it into food like candy or drinks. Now, when marijuana is consumed, the effects are delayed and can be more potent when you consume by eating. Peak effect occurs around 30 minutes to an hour after consumption and usually lasts longer than the inhaled version. Now, expect to feel high for two to eight hours following the consumption. The edible type like the brownies and gummies, for example, the strain of the marijuana, how much you consumed, and your metabolism are all factors that actually influence the duration of your high. Now, if you decide to try it, start really slowly and pay close attention to the dosage. Edibles purchased from a licensed dispensary should always be labeled with the amount of marijuana in each edible serving, usually 10 mg per serving, whereas the edibles made outside of a licensed dispensary can vary greatly in strength, the way that you buy on the street or go to a store. And of course, don't forget to dose insulin for carbs in the edible version. It is still edible. Just keep in mind that marijuana can make you more sensitive to insulin, so you may require less than usual. Now, what should diabetics expect if they consume marijuana, right? That's the ultimate question. Marijuana has an effect on the mental function, which must be planned for and closely monitored when managing a complex illness like diabetes with immediate consequences. Here are some important guidelines for you to follow if you are using marijuana, especially for the first time. Now, number one, do not go it alone. Make sure you are with someone you can trust who is aware of your diabetes and understands the symptoms of low and high blood sugars and promises to stay sober long enough to assist you if necessary. Understand your starting blood sugar and amount of insulin you have on hand. Marijuana makes some people again more sensitive to insulin and making low or high blood sugar symptoms worse in some cases. The sensations associated with marijuana in some people can be similar to low blood sugar, so regularly monitor your blood sugar using a continuous glucose monitor such as Dexcom or Libre or check your blood sugar with a finger stick frequently. In case of low blood sugar, keep fast-acting glucose and glucagon on hand and ascertain that those you are with are aware of what to do in the event of a severely low blood sugar. Number two, begin slowly. Marijuana affects each individual differently and different strains will affect you differently as well. So again, begin slowly. Learn how marijuana affects your system and don't assume that because you have tried it once or twice, it will always have the same effect on you the same way. Now, what the diabetes community would like to know. Overall, everybody wants to know about this, right? Not everybody, but at least people who want to try. 
Now, aside from uh, the other previously mentioned stuff, uh, here are some additional pointers to keep in mind. So, I would say beware of any changes in perception. If you are under the influence of a mind-altering substance, such as alcohol, you might not be able to tell if your blood glucose levels are low or high. Recognize that your general perception may be incorrect or faulty. So someone I saw in the clinic said, I thought I was going to die. And he says, I was certain that I required an ambulance. I ate three McChickens without bolusing and woke up with a blood sugar of 450 milligram per deciliter. Now another patient said, because I have a CGM like Dexcom, I always keep a close eye on my blood sugar levels when I'm using the marijuana. Now I was around 150, he says, moving down slightly on two separate occasions, but I felt really low with the blood sugars. Felt shaky, vision blurring, and about to pass out. He says first time he stayed conscious, but the second time he passed out and landed on the hard ground. His blood sugar was falling fast. He says when I woke up, the blood sugar was like down to 70 and the arrows were showing down, indicating that his blood sugars are keep going down super fast, even at the level of 70. He says it appears to happen to me when I smoke too much, right? Well, of course. So he says, he says it's strange that my body will act as if I'm extremely low with the blood sugar when he's not as well even though blood sugar goes down frequently when he does that so check your blood sugar levels on a regular basis because of the altered perception you should check your blood sugar at actually regular intervals maybe you can set an alarm to ensure that you are in a safe range and make sure you are with people who can actually help you if you have an extremely high or an extremely low blood sugar and if you are not with it to be able to help yourself. Now another patient said smoking causes my blood sugar to drop naturally. I start smoking, she goes, and then, then it just slowly fades away. So I have to be careful to either stop my pump or have some sugar or something like that. Now another patient of mine said, I'm always so afraid of crashing low after drinking that marijuana thing. I never really have fun because there is no sugar or carbs in smoke, so you don't get that effect of getting really high and then crashing. So he said, she goes, I prefer smoking to drinking because it makes me feel safer and more in control. That's a type one diabetic patient. Now for munchies, I would say dose your insulin carefully because marijuana can cause hunger, right? So you may want to eat a lot. So make sure to give your insulin for the exact amount you intend to consume because your mental state will be altered when you are high it may be a good idea to plan ahead of time so prepare your snacks and write down uh, the carb amount and corresponding insulin dose on a sticky note or in your phone alternatively don't keep like a super high carb snacks near where you will be smoking weed. I'd rather apples, carrots, and the things like that will be sufficient. Now, recently a patient of mine said, when I smoke, my blood sugar spikes and I get the munchies and I eat everything. Another one said, I get what I refer to as gradual munchies. I just slowly snack on everything over time and because I never eat more than a handful of something at a time, I never properly carb count or do the proper amount of insulin. My blood sugar levels is always elevated, he says. Now we understand that this one is frightening. So your healthcare provider, particularly the one on your team you see for your diabetes care, should assist you in developing a plan for when you use a marijuana. They can assist you in identifying blood sugar patterns associated with consumption and developing a plan for insulin dosing when you have THC on board as your body's insulin sensitivity may vary. Again, be aware of your surroundings and your body when using any substance. Take extra precautions to ensure your safety and ability to successfully manage your diabetes. Remember, don't feel obligated to try something you're not comfortable with. The decision is entirely up to you. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to subscribe, save, and write a comment. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.